What's going on guys, today we're going to be slapping together an Eduard Weekend Edition Mustang. I've always wanted to build one of these guys, partially because I just love blue nose Mustangs and partially because I've actually screwed up a couple of these before. So I said, you know what, this time we're going to record our first video, we're going to finish this bad boy, and it's going to turn out how it turns out. Hopefully it turns out good. So without further ado, let's get rolling. Starting out, let's clip out the parts with our sharp Tamiya side cutters. These things are always a good investment. Maybe I'll get those expensive god hand ones next, I don't know. Cleaning up our parts, Tamiya sanding sponge cut into small pieces, you can't beat that. A thing I like to do is kind of cut my parts all off the sprue at once, the big ones at least, for all the main sub assemblies and then throw them into a box together for safekeeping. Priming up the inside, we've already got some nice detail going with the side walls and the seat. There's just a lot of nice detail here in general. You gotta give Edward a high five for that one. Their stuff is always detailed, and maybe it's a little harder to put together than some Tamiya, but I think the end result is worth it. You know, if it's not your first model, you can probably handle it. So we're laying that Tamiya LP11 silver base coat down. I'm gonna do some hairspray chipping on the seat in a minute, also, we're just covering your basic metallics like the intake, the radiator, all of that good stuff. After that, some MRP interior green gets our classic World War II interior green look. And don't forget your zinc chromate yellow for the wheel well. A little bit of clever masking with some Tamiya tape and liquid mask. And we've got our green and black floor done as well. After that, we hit the seat with some hairspray to get ready for our chipping process. Start with a stiff brush, just like all the tutorials say. Then when that fails, just break out the sanding stick and scrape the paint straight off. That's what I do. Masking off the seat a little more because frankly my brush painting isn't all that good. We've got a nice black top. All right, the interior is coming together. Time to pick out those details with a little bit of water-based Vallejo paint. This has always been a struggle for me, but I found that by getting some small brushes and bracing my hand, I can actually pick this out and not have to redo a bunch of this work. And I think it looks pretty decent at the end of the day. Next up, we're hitting those tiny interior decals and stencils that Edward provides us with. They're a little bit of work, but honestly, I think the result is well worth it. Don't forget to do a leather effect for your headrest by chipping a little bit of light gray paint with a sponge onto the leather piece. You can see it stands out a little bit at first, but if you take an oil wash made out of some dark colors like raw umber and black, you could wash over it, unify the coloring, and actually get it to turn out pretty good. I'd recommend that you practice this on a spare piece if it's your first time, but it shouldn't take much more than that to get a hang of the idea. Yeah, I think that looks okay. This is a teeny tiny headrest after all. Next up, just a little bit of dry brushing on the interior details to give them a worn, used look. Then when all that's done, unify the finish with a little bit of flat coat to get a nice, flat, satiny varnish. Yeah, sealing in those decals too. Next up, I'm taking my Tamiya LP11 and handling the wheel well, since we have to have that before we can close up the wings and then put the fuselage on. A little bit of zinc chromate primer for the front of the wheel well, and it starts to look pretty slick in my opinion. Throw a little bit of Tamiya panel line accent color black on there, and you've got a nice, dirty, greasy metallic finish. Let it dry, and then just wipe it off with a Q-tip. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Next, pick out some clear colors on the lights that go under the wing. Do this before you close your wing up. And then final assembly for the interior pieces can commence. I like using some white PVA glue for this because realistically I could rip it back off if I need to. Not that I'm gonna need to, right? Yeah, this is looking good. Last thing before we close up, let's do some weathering. A little Mr. Weathering color white dust on there and I think we're gonna get a lot of bang for our buck in terms of weathering techniques for a cockpit that shouldn't be used, but not altogether filthy, or at least I didn't want this one to be altogether filthy. 
I like the Mr. Weathering color products because they're basically pre-made oil paints. Oils are my favorite weathering technique by far, but sometimes it's annoying to break out the tubes and the Mr. Weathering color stuff really makes it a little more convenient. Close up the fuselage with a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin, but make sure not to go overboard so you don't get any weird marks on the fuselage. And then, just apply some pressure. If you apply the right pressure and get the parts aligned evenly, you might even find that you don't need any filler. As you're gonna see, this is about the only spot on this plane that I didn't need any filler, and I actually had to battle some pretty serious seam lines, but I take responsibility for those, for the most part. You're gonna see a pretty good one under the bottom intake, but I managed to fill it with some black CA, which is my favorite filler since it doesn't tend to go seam as badly due to how hard it dries. When I use black CA, I like to start with that shiny coating of kicker, put my black CA on top, and then dose it with another layer of kicker. That's how I got this nice wide taper that did an acceptable job of filling the bottom seam on the intake here, yeah. Not too bad, I'd say. All right, we're looking good. Now, before we can close it up and hit with some primer, we just gotta finish up the cockpit. That means masking our canopy with some super thin Tamiya tape on the edges, and then secretly stealing some old Edward masks from the front canopy from an older attempt that uh, we're not gonna talk about. A little bit of masking saw R, and we can paint our mask onto the main canopy. This is my favorite way to do canopies. Oh yeah, we had one last seam to deal with. This seam right in front of the, the glass was a little bit of a pain to deal with, but ultimately, it came out okay. The cockpit for this kit just uses a classic decal over plastic system, which I think looks all right when you do it correctly. You just gotta make sure that you use a lot of decal softener, and then, they generally mold over pretty well, especially if you have good decals like this Edward set. Overall, I've been impressed with it, but we'll get to that more later. First, we gotta finish the chipping on our pedals. And then, once that's done, the decal is dried and we can hit some gloss varnish for the dial glass. Yeah, it looks good. All right, now that we're ready for primer, let's mask up the wheel wells and such. Being that I'm a savage, I just use Tamiya Extra Thin to glue the canopy on. If you do this, please be careful not to leave tide marks like uh, the one I may or may not have left on this plane. But that's my fault more than the glue itself. All right, laying that Mr. Surfacer 1500 black on there, we're vadering out this Mustang and it's starting to look like a plane. Now, as you might know, Mustangs had bare metal as well as silver aluminum lacquer paint on the wings and some of the control surfaces. I handled the silver aluminum lacquer paint with Tamiya LP11 and did my bare metal finish in Mr. Color Super Metallic Super Fine Silver. It's really satisfying to see this stuff go on and it's kind of nice that you don't need to do a gloss varnish beneath it like with all clad and some other types of metallic paints. It came out very shiny. I hit this with a layer of varnish later to unify the surface and make it look a little worn, but for the meantime, it's pretty tasty. First things first though, we gotta hit our blue nose. I'm gonna act like this masking job took me moments just like in the video, but I probably spent a good hour or two getting those lines perfect. It's gonna be super satisfying peeling this mask off. Next, we gotta mask our invasion stripes. This was also a little bit of a process since you just have to look by reference and really carefully lay the tape. Starting off with our white stripes, I block out the square and then come back later for the black. While it's drying, I hit our silver control surfaces, which are the ailerons, the flaps, and the landing gear covers. Yeah. Then, once the white's dry, I mask out our black stripes. Behind the exhaust, there's a darker panel that I masked off and painted with some Super Iron 2 from Mr. Color. 
I should have done this before I painted the blue, but I got a little caught up and did it afterwards. It still turned out okay though. Onto the invasion stripes under the wing, again, very satisfying masking job. This was much easier than the invasion stripes on the back too, so it didn't take nearly as long. Once all the stripes were done, just hit them with a little bit of MRP matte varnish and get them nice and unified with the metallic finish. These Edward decals have been the source of a lot of controversy lately. How do they work? How well do they work? Should you peel them off? Well, I basically learned all that here. And here was my findings. First, if you just use them as regular decals, they actually work quite nicely. And even though it seems like they have a lot of excess carrier film, surprisingly, it kind of blends right away, even under, especially under a matte varnish. All right, with all that behind us, we can get on to some weathering. I like to keep it simple, use the oil paints, and create a little palette with either cardboard or some aluminum foil if I don't want the oil to leach out. Since this plane wasn't gonna be a super dirty example, I decided to start with a pretty basic raw umber pin wash. Let it dry for a minute, wipe it off with a Q-tip, realize the Q-tip is not enough, and then go in with the paper towel. Next, it's time to build up some of the stains on the front of the plane using engine grease, raw umber, and a little bit of black. Use your blender brush and blend in the excess oil paint, leaving just the spots that you want to be nice and dark and smooth transitions to make it look natural. Our blue nosed pony is starting to look like she's seen some stuff, but no longer fresh off the showroom floor. I wanted to give the wings a little bit of an oxidized, worn finish since, after all, it's aluminum lacquer, but it is paint. To achieve this, I dotted white and light gray dots of oil paint all over the wings and then used a wide flat brush dipped in thinner to blend them in until there was no more streaking left. You only see it under just the right light, but it provides a believably faded finish. I did something similar on the decals to make the paint for the insignia look likewise worn in as though it's been out in the sun for who knows maybe many months or longer at this point add a little bit of fading with white to the blue nose and the whole plane is starting to come together
remember, your underside weathering is not complete until you've hit it with some oil paint splatters. After everything you've done, trust me, these are gonna pull it together and make the finish look realistic. Hey guys, I just wanted to say a huge thank you for getting through this much of the video and that if you liked it, it would mean everything to me if you could go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's a little thing, but it's big to YouTube and to my channel. Thank you very much and let's get to the pictures.